Hi, this is Terry Couty of Deep Sea Foundation. I'm very honored to be with Eric I with Restorative Tattoo Arts at Eric I Studio in downtown Seattle today. Eric, welcome. Thank you. We're great to great to have you here today. So, um, we have a Facebook group and we fielded some questions to some ladies and they have a lot of questions about coming in to have a post-mastectomy restorative tattoo. Now that can be in the form of a decorative art tattoo. It can also be in the form of restoring the nipple and areola area. And it could just be the areola, correct? So we're, yes. gonna, we're gonna go into all of that today. Um, I've got some questions for you. So we're gonna start out by asking Eric who actually is a candidate for a post-mastectomy tattoo? So what I mean by that specifically, Eric, is have you seen patients that are both autologous, using your own tissue, and implant-based patients? Yes, I've worked with most every type of reconstruction that you could uh, imagine over the years that I've been doing this, uh, yeah. All right, great. So whether you've had implant or whether you've used your own tissue, um, Eric has done both of those. So that's good to know, especially if you're in the Seattle area or you can always travel to come see him. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, so if you have patients that come in, do any of them present with any medical comorbidities? And by that, we mean um, anything that could range with a bleeding disorder, uh, diabetes, um, medical comorbidities could also include maybe a past smoker. Um, so can you address that for us, Eric? Uh, sure. Um, over the years that I've been tattooing, I have dealt with that uh, quite a bit. And it generally comes up when people are looking at the release form that we have them sign that has a list of different uh, types of things that may interfere with the tattoo process. Um, there are obvious things like being on blood thinner, mm -hmm. uh, and in each case, I ask the patient, uh, the client, I'm sorry, to uh, ask their doctor. I mean, what they think is best. With diabetes, there can be issues with uh, circulation below the knees, for instance. Um, we want the doctor to clear it, basically, uh, and then I'll defer to what the doctor uh, has said. But I've worked with lots of patients with with varying. Uh, comorbidities that uh, we've made it through the t tattoo process, no problem. Okay, good. So I'm going to segue into a question because you mentioned doctors, you me mentioned forms. Uh, we had an earlier discussion before um, we started the video about insurance and payment of these tattoos because I really, honestly, I get varying stories from women who have gone to different artists. Tell us how you specifically have handled that in your practice. Yeah, I mean, coming into doing restorative tattooing, uh, I had to, I'm still learning quite a bit about uh, insurance and the process of being reimbursed. It's different with every insurance company, of course, mm -hmm. and if you're going through treatment, you know how it can be frustrating yeah. to deal with uh, insurance companies. So um, every case is a little bit different. Some women have uh, full reimbursement after they've come to see me. Some women have uh, have had to appeal several times before they get any reimbursement. Um, and some women have been denied. But uh, I think it is it's legally considered uh, as part of the Cancer Care Act as you know part of the reconstruction. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn more from insurance companies, and hopefully some insurance companies have been receptive to me teaching them more about what I do. So uh, hopefully that will start to even out as more and more people start doing this type of work. Really like it that you mentioned the the, uh, the CARE Act that was passed, I think it was mm -hmm. 1998, because that's all about symmetry. Yeah. And to achieve symmetry, you know, part of what you do is doing that. So I yes. hopefully maybe that will break open some doors with insurance and, and having patients to deal with that less um, because we always say sometimes you know you have to be your own best advocate yes and those insurance hiccups are not fun I have another question that uh, you know a lot of members were curious about they asked the question is the ink toxic 
Well, I'll let you go with that because uh. <laughs> I, I think it. I think it's a question of concern as breast cancer patients. So you tell us about yes. that. Yes, and it's it's a valid question because mm -hmm. you're introducing a foreign element into your skin, into your body. So uh, the pigments that we use are all made specifically for tattooing, and the FDA keeps an eye on what we use. Uh, there have been recalls of certain brands of tattoo ink. There have mm -hmm. been recalls of batches of ink. We keep on top of that um, because, well, I mean, it's our livelihood, and uh, we don't we don't want to. Uh, personally, I work with inks, pigments that have the least amount of ingredients, so to speak. Okay. Uh, so you know, that just seems the most direct route to to getting tattooing to happen and not mm -hmm. introducing a bunch of new things into the process. So, yeah. Um, that's the long answer, I suppose. No, that's that was a very good brief concise answer, I think. Uh, so something I researched last night on the Mayo side, and I'm actually going to put it, embed it in the blog that I think that I write for this video. Um, I guess in years past, there was some iron in some inks. And I think the, the question that was brought up is that if you have a tattoo, does it interfere with imaging? And very seldom it does um, because that iron has been it's no longer in the ink. Can you address that? You know, honestly, I don't know a lot about that, but that mm -hmm. question has come up mm -hmm. uh, during my career in doing this. Um, and I believe there was even on the television show Mythbusters, they had one of the people on their staff who had sleeve tattoos mm -hmm. who they did MRI imaging on her and, you know, it, they busted the myth, so to speak. But um, it doesn't seem to be that the amount of uh, iron oxide that would be in a tattoo pigment could possibly affect the imaging process. So yeah, I, th I, I think that's uh, maybe a myth, like you said, that has been perpetuated maybe throughout the years. And I, I didn't find anything too dilatory on it either. So yeah, good to know. Um, one last question before we go on to our next video. Um, if a woman comes in and she has had her nipples removed, her areola moved, the entire nipple areola area removed at reconstruction, and she knows that's going to happen. She snaps a photo before her mastectomy, which I highly encourage all of you to do. I didn't do that, but I had skin sparing, nipple sparing, so it wasn't an issue for me, but I highly recommend that you do that. If they snap that photo and bring it into you, Eric, is it easy for you then to match the original with color, size, shape? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the the no part of that would be is that it's not easy for somebody to take a photo that accurate accurately represents their color, their tone, their their skin tone, and the areola color and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Every photo you take, every different lighting situation is going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Where it is very helpful is. The amount of texture that a person has, the Montgomery, Montgomery glands, glands, yeah, all these things. Um, if you want to recreate the nipple as closely to your natural one uh, as possible, that is very helpful. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, you also have reconstruction, so the shape and size of the new breasts are uh, probably going to be a little bit different. So, right. what we shoot for is. Uh, size and shape that that matches the the new size and shape that you have and then coloration it's really up to you i mean if you always wanted a little lighter more pink coloration you mm -hmm. can do that um if you want to keep it as close to your natural uh coloration photos are very helpful yes okay yeah. well good to know hey thanks for that great video we're going to move on to another one here in just a little bit um, but that was some fantastic information for us. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Yeah. All right.